an impact on everyone whose paths he crossed. We appreciate more than we can say that you all have come to help his family through this difficult time. Today, we gather together to remember Rickelson and the light he brought into our lives. Like me, Like me, I know you all will continue to keep. Like me, I know you all will continue keeping him. I know you all will continue keeping him in your heart today and always. We'll start off with a poem by Maya. Is Maya here? I stand here today with a broken heart to say goodbye to you, my friend, my smile, my comforter. Together we made memories that will last forever. We laugh every day and share the most wonderful moments. His kindness, strength, and humility touch not only me, but his family and friends. His contagious smile and goofy sense of humor will light up any room he was in. He also made the worst day be a bit brighter once his was around. I am beyond grateful he was by my side. Through all the incredible, in, incredible journey, and I won't forget the love in his eyes that melts my heart when he watches me and his mother. Although he may be gone from this world, his love lives on through the people he touched. We, care, we carry his memories with us, and it brings me comfort to see that so much of him is alive in me, his family, and friends. It is time to say goodbye to you, my love. We will miss you so much, and we will forever love you. We will always remember you, Rickelson. Thank you, Maya. We'll now have a song by EJ. EJ, are you here? All right, so we'll move on to a song by Carisha.
Pleasant good afternoon to everyone. This afternoon I'm here to do There is power in the name, the name of Jesus. Power in the name, power in the name, power in the name, the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a ransom you paid. What a ransom you paid. For me, for me. What a ransom you paid. For me, oh Jesus. What a ransom you paid. For me, Jesus. Jesus, 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 what a ransom you paid. The name of Jesus, power in the name, power in the name, power in the name. The name of Jesus, 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 what a ransom you pay. There is power in the name, the name of Jesus, power in the name. Jesus, 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 what a ransom you paid. What a ransom you paid for me, Jesus. What a ransom you paid for me, Jesus. What a ransom you paid for me. Jesus, 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 what a ransom you paid, what a ransom you paid, what a ransom you paid, for me, what a ransom you paid. Jesus, Jesus, what a ransom you paid, what a ransom you paid for me. Jesus, what a ransom you paid. 
What a ransom you paid for me, Jesus. What a ransom you paid. Jesus, what a ransom you paid for me, Jesus. Jesus, 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 what a ransom you paid. What a ransom you paid, Jesus. That heals power in the name that is Ashwa so much power in the name that is every disease Jesus 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 what a ransom you paid what a ransom you paid Thank you. gave life to me turned the baby into a lady and mama all you had to offer was a promise of lifetime of love now I know And I know a love so complete. Someday must leave, must say goodbye. Huh? Goodbye's the saddest word I'll ever hear. Goodbye's the last time I will hold you near. Someday. To a man, a mama, all I ever needed was a guarantee of you loving me. Cause I know there is no other love like a mother's love for a child. And it had so something so strong, and someday began must say goodbye. Ooh, goodbye's the saddest word I'll ever hear. Goodbye's the last time I will hold you near. Break my heart to 
I just do one more song before I leave. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never fail, you never change. You are faithful till the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You've proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. 
are too faithful to fail me. Oh, Jesus. You are too faithful to disappoint me. You have proven yourself in my life. And I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. Hey, da 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 da. Hey, da 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 da. Hey, da 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 da. We worship you. You are the God. You are who you are. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never fail, you never change, God. You are faithful to the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. You are too faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to disappoint me. You're proving yourself in my life. And I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. Too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You're proving yourself in my life And I've come to realize You're too faithful to fail me You're too loving to leave me You're too loving to leave me halfway what you said to always finish to realize you are too faithful to leave me. You are too loving to leave me. Too loving, too loving. You are too loving to leave me halfway. You're proving yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You're proving yourself in my life And I've come to realize You're too faithful to fail me Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kerisha, for the wonderful renditions. We will now have a song by Kelson's former classmates from the Imani program.
Good evening, everyone. Um, Rickelson Toussaint has been a part of our Batch 8, the new Imani program. And um, these are some of our colleagues, some of his colleagues, has been his supervisor for that period. And um, you know, Rickelson came into our class, and that's the first time some of us would have met him. And um, once you make contact, that's it, you're a touch for life. And um, standing here today and seeing so many of you here this evening, there's a testament of who Rick Elson is or was. It's hard to reach that place as yet. Um, so his, fo his colleagues would share just a few of, of the thoughts that we would have come across during that process of time. Rick Helson, Rick Boy, or the nickname Saga Boy as we gave him in the class. Once Rick Helson into, stepped into the room, you knew the rest of the class would be joyous. You can shed a tear that he is gone, or you can smile because he had lived a happy and joyous life. Rick Helson, your smile so bright. Your smile so bright. Good dark. Could lit up the, the darkest night. His life, though it was short, was full of fun and enthusiastic. We have done a lot of things that we will never regret. But Rick Boy, your memories we may never forget. The cheerful, pleasant ways the heart that wants so many friends because it's so big. Swagger boy, the one with the grand entrance, the one that cheers up the whole class. This is not goodbye. This is just later for now, until we meet again. Rest in peace, Rick Elson. Rick Elson, reliable, intelligent, Caring, kind, exquisite, lovable, silent, outstanding, and neat. These are a few words to describe you. Meeting you for the first time one year ago has brought joy to our classroom because whether it was a joke or someone said something and it was funny, he would start to laugh uncontrollably. And anyone around him would not have a choice but to start laughing. He had an infectious laughter. Rick Elson, you will always be a part of our team. Because from that very first day, you never once passed without hailing every one of us. Rick Elson often liked to stay back in such as after class and reason with his classmates about life and at the same time have a bit of fun. Well, as the saying goes, you only get one chance to make a first good impression. And fortunately, and fortunately enough for us, Rick Elson, he made a great one. From the moment he entered a room to the moment he left, he always greeted everyone with a smile that stretched from ear to ear. Rick Elson was indeed a pleasant young man. With a bright future ahead of him. He was respectable, jovial, pleasant, and certainly had a wonderful soul. We will certainly miss you, Rick Elson. Your time was short, but you came as a box of fireworks that lit up our lives, and when all is done, you left a smile on our face. Sleep in peace, our wonderful friend. Uh, 
our Rick Helson, our Rick boy, our Saga boy. We be Manny Batch 8 of St. Patrick's East with heavy hearts today, celebrate with the family and relatives the extraordinary life of Rick Helson Toussaint. It is indeed a sad occasion, a day we wish would never come, a time we wish we could turn back the clock to that fateful day, June 20th, 2023, when our beloved was snatched away from us, so cruelly and unnecessarily. This is indeed a hard pill to swallow, a debt that had to accept, a goodbye we do not want to say. To Rick Helson's family, Please accept our deepest condolences and our sympathy goes out to all of you who are affected by his death. While this is a sad day, we want to celebrate his life and reminisce on the good times we had with him through the Imani training sessions. Though brief, our class was filled with lots of fun, smiles and laughter. We as a class, his fellow trainees, enjoyed having him among our group. He was one of the seven boys in our class, but he surely stood out. Let's not fail to mention his dress code. Rick Helson was one of the neatest, well-dressed, probably the most handsome of them all, no offense to the other men. But Rick Helson was what we called a saga boy. He was hot for days. The boy was always on point. His hair always neat and well-groomed. If there were marks or points for dress code and physical appearance, he would have gotten all A's top of his class. We also have pictures of him in class giving presentation, practicing his mock interview, preparing for the world of work. And our social event, at our social event, we saw him come out of his shell. We have memories of him singing his favorite dance hall songs word for word and dancing to them proudly. We mostly enjoyed our after class lime in Sotez. Rick Helson was a ladies man. You will always find him. Waiting or in the midst of a certain group of girls. Every day religiously this group will walk from school and hang out at a certain supermarket front or at some convenient spot in town. His favorite clique from class included the likes of Vandel, Danisha, Anika, Samantha, Kijel, Lurana, Nikel, Nikito, and Nishan. That was his squad. His friends who supported him through class and was there for him throughout that period. We always had a good laugh, flirt, old talk. We all just until we all got a bus and went to our several homes. These are just a few of the precious times we spent with him and these memories will stay with us forever. We are privileged to have met him and spent quality time with him and to receive his beautiful smile, his infectious laugh and his warm, charming personality. This is a loss for us all. A presence, a light was taken from this world too soon. On behalf of Ms. Sutherland, Mrs. Williams, and the entire Imani Batch 8 of St. Patrick's East, we say goodbye, Rick Elson. We love you and pray you stay in God's memory, and we will see you soon on Resurrection Morning. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. The floor is now open for any other tributes. Is there anyone that would like to come forward to share a few words with us on the person that Rick Helson was? This 
It says a poem by Maya, and it says a song by Egypt. You have to read something? Oh. All right, so we'll have a poem by Brianna, Rickelson's cousin. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's actually not a poem. It's actually kind words that his aunt, Kizi, who's unable to make it today, has left for him. So on behalf of Kizi Tucson, I'll be able to give her the words. I am not here today to tell just how much I love you. So I'm writing this to you, my sweet boy. Rakelson, my heart is broken and heavy. You are not just my nephew, but also my son. Writing this is by far one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. There isn't enough words to describe what I'm feeling at this moment. You, it hasn't gotten any easier. I miss you tremendously. The pain I got from losing you is one I cannot even explain to try, even if I tried. I love you beyond words could ever express. I have so much fond memories of you that I will cherish for the rest of my life. You are a ray of sunshine, not just to me, but everyone who had the pleasure to be a part of your life. Saying goodbye isn't something I ever imagined I would be able to say to you so soon in such an untimely manner. I know you always say, Auntie Kizi, don't cry. I'll always be good, but it hurts. It hurts so much that not the only peace I have at this point is knowing that God has gained another angel by his, tongue, by his throne. You have gained your wings, my love. I wish that rest in peace meant return if possible. I wish I, can give, I wish I can be given just one more chance to tell you how much I love you, how proud I am of you. Though I'm not there in person to say my final goodbye and respect to your bodily remains, your memories and love will, be, will forever be a part of me and I will forever cherish the precious time and moments God has granted me with the pleasure of sharing with you. I love you, my Raquelson, forever and beyond sleep in perfect peace. My love, until we meet again. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward to share with us? Good afternoon, everyone. It is with great, great sadness that I'm here today. Uh, it hurts so much. So young, so senseless. The killing is just, that's not worth it. There is no reason why this young guy should be in the coffin. No reason. At first, when I get the news, I was angry. I don't know. I keep asking why. Why? I don't know. I only hear his name on his, on the, um, on an email I got from my daughter. She said someone named Rickelson, and I think he's related to you. So then I called Tiny, and Tiny said, yes, that's Bila's son. I don't know Bila. I hear the name. I've left so long, I don't know. I'm looking around to see who I remember. It's so hard detecting who is family because everybody looked like family to me. I am so disgusted. And I keep saying, why? And then after asking why, why, why so many times, it comes to me. Why are you asking why? I made him and I know I number his days. I'm ready for him. So please, he is in heaven. Don't cry and weep so much. He's all right. Rickerson is okay. We should be sorry for the guy that killed him because he's gonna answer to the almighty God. I pray for strength for the family and I hope that everyone will get strength from here. The good things I heard about him 
Try to remember the good things. Forget about the bad. He'll be okay. And the family will be strong. We will be united. And I pray that everyone will just uphold the family. In Jesus' name, let's be strong. Thank you. Thank you so much for your words of encouragement. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward to share? Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to say that the good ones always leave us on go. Rick Elson was one of the most respectful, humble, loving young man I ever met. And I will surely miss him. Love you, Kelson. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to say, on the behalf of the Toussaint family and the Belfont family, I would like to thank everybody that turned on this evening to support the family. But I don't have not much to say, but Rick Elson is my first grandson. So, you know, that's my second line. And he died just so. So, you know, they say first generation, second generation, third generation. He was my second generation. And I'm standing here now without my first grandchild. When we came from born to Bila to St. from River Sally, I was so happy to have my first grandchild. When Pat Simit me in Sotez and tell me Bila do they are glad, I'm running up in Sally. I'm going to wash clothes by Patsy and spread them on the wire. So he grew with me from little things so to man. You hear all the ladies say he's nice. I was looking for my grandchild, my first great grand from him. And I didn't get it, but God knows why. So I just want his soul to rest in peace. He didn't leave me nothing to cherish, but he left me some fond memories from since he's small. So I'm going to leave with that and take counsel. So I would like to say thank you very much. And Bila, don't cry too much because we still have Omarion. God didn't take two of them. He only take one. We have one still. So all the love we used to show our Rick Elson, we go show our own Marian with it. Okay, Miguel, take your time with it. I love you still, you're still my daughter in law. Okay, just take care of the younger ones, and if you ever need anything, don't forget to call on me. I'm only a phone call away. And right, thanks everybody again for coming out. And Pastor King, I would like to thank you too, because the day when me and Miss Patsy, me and Bill and mother was balling and playing, Master was there. So thank you for standing up with us right through it. Okay, Pastor. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Grandmom. Is there anybody else that would like to come forward and share with us? Good afternoon to everyone. Almost everyone has the same thing to say about Rick Elson. Always friendly, always have a nice smile. He would never see you and not say hello. And um, Rick Elson would not pass by in the church and see the church open and would not come in. Especially on a Saturday when we have worship practice. Rick Elson would always pass by. If it's not a wave, he would step inside, he would sit down and listen to us play music and sing. And sometimes we'd have discussion and just laugh. And the last time I saw Rick Elson was Sunday at church. Jason would always invite him. I would always invite Rick Elson to church. And he came that Sunday and I was outside. I wasn't leading that time, I was outside. And he came and I said, why don't you come inside and have a seat? And I said, Colleen, I'm, 
I don't feel comfortable because I'm not dressed properly. And I said, it's okay. You can come in. It doesn't matter what you wear. And said, you know what? I don't feel comfortable. I, I just woke up. You know what? Next time I'm going to come inside and sit. He stayed there with a few minutes. And then he said, you know what, Colleen? I'm going to catch up with you. He gave me a bounce and he said, goodbye. And that was the last time I saw Rick Elson. I don't know if Rick Elson had the opportunity to give his life to Christ, but I'm happy that he would visit the church once the church is open. Would I be Jason alone in the church and Jason would actually read the word of God with him, give him a, a New Testament Bible of the book of St. John. If it's just to sit and say hello and listen to us play music and sing, he would not pass and say hello. I miss him a lot. Most of the time I'm angry about what happened. But I'm just going to continue to ask God for peace and that knowing that Rick Kelson didn't leave bad memories, that he left good ones that we can cherish. Good ones. And that is something special about Rick Kelson. When everyone has something good to say about a young man, that is something amazing. And I'm glad that I had the opportunity to see it and talk and laugh and even hug Rick Kelson. Thank you very much, Carleen. So at this time, we would move on. And so I'd like to invite Pastor King to do the opening prayer. I thank you, and let me take the opportunity in welcoming all of you who are gathered here today as we celebrate the life of Rick Elson, I wish to take the opportunity to welcome you today. There are a number of persons who have already expressed. And so we are happy that you have taken the time to be here um, with us today. Let me invite you to stand, please, as we will have the opening prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, today we pause and we want to thank you for your goodness. We want to thank you for your mercies. We want to thank you for your love. We want to thank you, Father, for being here with us today. We ask, oh God, that you would touch the family members, relatives, friends, and all those who are concerned. Today, Father, you know the hearts of the many persons that are reaching out to you. The truth is, there are more questions than answers. Our Father in heaven, today we stand, we look to you. We commit this service into your hands. We ask your blessings upon everything that will be said and done. And at the end of it, we pray that each of us would leave here, Lord, looking within ourselves, acknowledging you as Lord and Master and Lord of our lives. We ask, oh God, your direction. We ask your leading in this service today. In Jesus' lovely name. Please remain standing as we will do the opening song softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. At the hospital, he's waiting and watching, watching for you. Jesus is 
Thank you. Please be seated. Now this time we are, we'll be having the first scripture reading and that will be done by Tama Charles. So I invite the person having the responsibility to do the first reading. Afternoon, church. One minute, please. The scripture reading is taken from Isaiah 25, verse 6 to 9. In, the, in this mountain will Yahweh a host make up to all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wine on the lee. Of fat things full of marrow, of wine on the lee will be fine. Will be fine. He will destroy the monk, this mountain, the surface of the covering that covers all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. He has swallowed up death forever, and the Lord Yahweh will wipe away tears from off all faces, and the reproach of his people will he take away from all the earth, for Yahweh has spoke, spoken it. It shall be said in the that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is Yahweh. We have waited for him. We will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Ever salvation, pledges of Yeah. 
Thank you. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. We will now have the second scripture reading, and that will be done by Rhonda Mitchell. I invite her to come and to do the, um, the second scripture reading for us. Good afternoon, everyone. The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 
verses 51 to 58. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unremovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as he knew that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. We at least we were able to find some comforting words from the book that stands above all our books. As we continue, just before we have the eulogy, we are grateful today for the opportunity to be able to use the facilities here. The person who gives leadership to the Catholic Church here is the person, Father Gerald Paul, and he is here today, and I want to invite him to come and and speak some comforting words to you, the family members. Father Gerald Paul. Good afternoon to everyone. On behalf of my community, the Catholic community here in River Sally, I would like to extend our deepest sympathies to the family uh, of Rikelsa. I did hear about his death. Um, I wasn't in the island at the time, but I just realized how young he is. And um, that adds to the, the sadness, that adds to your pain, that adds to your suffering. Your pain is deep, your suffering unimaginable. In life, we tend to take everything into our hands. We tend to want to be in control of everything in life. In death, we come to a realization that God is in charge. We come to a realization that we must leave it in the hands of God. What can we do except to show deep sympathy and solidarity to the bereaved? And that's what I encourage from the entire community. Here, it doesn't matter whether you are religious or not whether you belong to this or that religion, a little brother has fallen and the pain is immense for the family, the loved ones. The pain is immense for the community. And as Romans chapter 8 tells us, God conquers death. Jesus conquers death. And though we can't understand, there is nothing we can say to really console ourselves. Nothing we can say to each other to make each other feel good. In this terrible moment, we can still put it in the hands of God. We have no choice but to leave it in the hands of God. And so I encourage 
the entire community to continue to extend that support, that solidarity to the members of the family. They would need your aid. They would need your shoulder. They would need your love and comfort for a very, very long time to come. Thank you, Father Paul, for those encouraging words. I hope you as a family members, you'll receive and find strength in it. So the Lord bless you. I think we all agree, as we have heard from a number of persons, it's really too short. And the truth is, Rick Elson has just had just begun leaving, and even though he's only 20 years old, I am certain that there is much to be said about him. At this time, we would have the eulogy, and that will be done by Sally Ann Mitchell. So let me invite Sally Ann Mitchell to come, who will do the eulogy. Good evening, everyone. We're here to celebrate the life of Rick Elson. And as auntie, I got the opportunity to meet a lovely young man. And I got the opportunity today to give the eulogy. And I think that is one of the greatest, greatest opportunity. So here we go. Rick Elson Toussaint was born on January 22, 2003, son of Bila Toussaint and, Rick and Rickson Belfour. Rickelson was a care, carefree, fun, loving, helpful child. His smile was infectious. <laughs> Humor was part of his charm and very generous and kind with every lick of back na nature. Rickelson had so much plans for the future and was working his way into achieving his goals. Unfortunately, his life was cut short and our heart aches without him. Our family chain has been broken. Past school friends and teachers from Westerhall Secondary School, McDonald College, and the Amani program year 2022 into 2023. We'll remember Rickelson as Javal, happy and always smiling because he embraced life and everything it throws in his way so gracefully, without a worry. Nothing was a bother or a problem to him. Though short his life was, filled with many trials but never once did he sat in his self-pity and guilt. He was a go-getter and an ambitious young man who lived every day of his 20 years to the most blissful way. Rick Elson never liked seeing anyone sad, worried, or broken. He was all about the family and loved each of us with such compassion and utter selflessness. God has suddenly gained an angel when he called him home. We, we, keep our wish, we keep on wishing and expecting him to walk through the door. We miss him, his, sorry, we miss his playful, funny, and silly jokes. Rick Elson, you were such a special person, an all-around top young man, so young but touched so many hearts. You are truly one of a kind. Our hearts have been broken, and life will never be the same without you. But we are left behind with your love and memories until we meet again. 
So rest in perfect peace, Rickelson. We love and miss you forever. Thank you. Persons that can stand, could you we all stand please as we sing the song? To God be the glory, great things he has done. So Lord be the glory that he gave us his son. For he ever in his life, our children for sin. And open the lives where they told the glory. Watch me. 
All right, please be seated. And we understand that it is getting even hotter than it is. And we have been here a while, but permit me to share a thought with us before we leave here to go to the cemetery where we will commit the remains of Rickelson, because this is the house that Rickelson used to be living in. And that's why he is considered dead, because Rickelson is not in the house anymore. Let me, on behalf of my family, the church family, extend to you the family members that are bereaved at this time our deepest sympathy and our prayer is that God will strengthen you as from here on we understand death having so many persons around can be very comforting but you will know that sometime later the crowd will not be there persons who travel from near and far to be here, they would have to get back into their routine. And so um, you are the, as the family members, you have all those memories. Very quickly, permit me to read from the Old Testament. I'm reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. And I am reading two verses. And I wish you could just give me undivided attention um, so that we can get out. We can get out here. This is how it reads. Verse 1 says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. Not the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light of the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. The few minutes I have to speak to us I speak to us on the topic, every young man, God's man, every young man, God's man. Now, when God taught about us as individuals, God taught about purpose. None of us came into this world by accident. Whether you are last child and your parents might have said, we don't know how you got here because we didn't plan for you. That's only their saying. They are not the ones who give children. God is the one who gives children. Now life should be a journey with purpose. So having life, there must be purpose. And we should be able to live our lives on purpose. Somebody may want to ask, what on earth am I here for? And I'm here to tell you that when God thought about you, as I said earlier, he thought about purpose. And God has given to this world many gifts uh, in all of us who are gathered here. And we are all certain that when Rickelson came into this world, that God would have made deposits in his life. Now, the younger the better. I wish to talk to us today and just on three points really. Um, Point one, the blessings of youthfulness, 
the disconnected generation and then remembering your creator. And that's where the sermon builds. So first of all, we want to talk about the blessings of youthfulness. And so when you talk about youthfulness, you talk about vigor. You talk about being fresh, vibrant, associated with health, physical attraction. And a lot of it was said about Rick Elson from the folks he interacted with. They just talk about him, his look, his dress, his smile, and all of it because he was just a youth. Probably me, they wouldn't be saying that because when you reach a certain age, you start to have wrinkles and a couple other things. So youthfulness has a way of standing out. You talk about youthfulness, it is connected to the ability to see things new for the first time. Talking about youthfulness, it is, a, it is about how um, vibrantly alive you are. Not when you were born, but as a youth. Enjoy your youth. You'll never be young than you are at this very moment. So we're talking about youthfulness. Does exercise and diet restore youthfulness? It doesn't matter how much we exercise. It doesn't matter how much we probably look at our diet. But that in itself is not going to, re um, to restore youthfulness. Now exercising and diet might cause you to be a little stronger, but once you pass your youthful stage, it doesn't matter what you do. You may feel like a youth, as somebody would say, but the truth is you're not a youth. Uh, being a youth, there are some things um, that one possesses that points out that this individual is a youth. Now, aging is inevitable. And the idea that we can be ex eternally youthful is a pitfall of society because society just tried to tell you, oh, being a youth, a youthfulness is just about how you think, but it is more than that because you who have gone past 50 and 60, you know very well how much the body aches. And there were some things that you were able to do very easily um, when you were youth. But as you age, somehow there are some things that reminds us that we are aging. The other day, I remember my wife saying to me, she said, I've been observing you, and I realized that when you're taking things from the cupboard now, you're not bending down as you used to, but somehow you're kneeling down. And that is an indication that I'm not a youth anymore. But there was a time when I was a youth, and I remember playing football for latas, and I'll be able to run like a horse and play games and do a number of things, but I've gone past that. So to exercise is all right, watch your diet is good, but that is not going to make you a youth. And there are so many persons who probably miss those youthful years, and at age 60 and 70, they want to prove that they are youth, but you're not a youth anymore. You've gone past the stage. Now the youth is the hope of our future. Youth comes but once in a lifetime. So we pass the stage. Can I tell you today that youthfulness speaks about strength. Youthfulness speaks about 
2020 vision. Now, youthfulness speaks about enthusiasm, joy, and a couple other things that we would see. I interact with the youths a lot in the community, and I sometimes look at their vitality, you know. Um, look at them, look at them, how versatile they are, and in a number of cases. But there was a time when I would have gone to the park and probably sweat with the guys, and there was a name that I never used to hear. But they themselves, they're observing it. So when I go to the park, even though I try to play a youth, they don't call me youth. They still say, old man, because you have gone past that. So you'd come but once in a lifetime. And there are so many things that you are able to do when you are youth. And today we talk about the potential. That's why Miles Monroe said, the richest place that you have on earth is the symmetry. All that was said about Rick Elson here today is not his potential. Your potential is what is locked up inside of you that you have not yet done. And this young man had so much locked up inside of him. But could you imagine all of these unknown? In a moment, I'll be saying, I commit all to the earth. As much as it is shocking to you, as much as it is painful, I was at home uh, making preparation the night for the funeral service of Knoxford, who died in the community. And while I was there, somebody, my phone rang, and somebody all the way from Maribel called and asked, uh, who is the person that died in your area? And I said, well, I really don't know because coming from there, I just came in. And I was there making some preparation. I didn't go outside. And then he tried to say to me that this person, and when he called in him, I said, no, it, it will not be this person's son. And it was only there and then I discovered when finding out that it was Rick Elson. His smile, as was already said, is really catching. I never thought that it was going to happen. The night before his passing, I was sitting in the veranda, and here he passed, he and his cousin, and again shouted out to me, and there was this great smile from him. Hours following that, to hear that he died, you could imagine how painful that is. In addition to that, his brother and myself, we have people up. That such a relationship that we've been talking and talking and talking and talking. So you could only imagine the pains. Um, one in knowing him, interacting with him, and being um, the pastor in the community and as somebody from the community who know the family members on, on both sides. I wish to bring very quickly because we have to pay attention, folks. Because we have a generation that has become disconnected. And so this generation is not to be blamed for the disconnection. But it must be, brothers and sisters, must be pointing in our direction. Now, parents, listen to me. Adults, listen to me. Now, recently with the violence and the crime that we had, I did a couple of voice notes that I sent out entitled, Come, Let Us Reason Together, Understanding the Importance of It. To men, whether you are a strong man, whether they call you shatter, whether they call you whatever, um, a professional man, the invitation was, Come. Let us reason together. Parents, adults listening today, restoring moral absolute to the fabric of our families and society is key for us to curb the destructive trend among our youth. Hello? 
we must also take steps to protect them from becoming emerged in a culture that glorifies violence, illicit sex. We must allow them to experience the love and nurture of a caring family. My personal research and my interaction with young people and youths confirms that our young people today are disconnected from most adults and lack a sense of personal identity and purpose. Listen to this. They are online, but they are disconnected. We have a generation that is online, but yet still, they are disconnected. Today's youth are logging on to the internet for more than just information and entertainment parents. They are logging on for more than just entertainment. And I will tell you, increasing numbers of young people are using social media in an attempt to connect socially with others. Yet young people who are seeking emotional and relational connection online are finding electronic relationship on fulfilling a cheap substitute for in-person friendship and interaction. Parents, the time has come for us to pause, stop, watch what is really happening. Because today in many homes, the father and the mothers, they are not the parents anymore. The tablet, the cell phone, and these have become so. We are too busy. So can you take your cell phone, take your tablet, and you just go in the room, and they're calling, Mommy, Mommy, I tell you, stay in your room. Take your tablet. It has destroyed us to the point that there is a big breakdown in communication and brothers and sisters in the area of um, relating one to the other. Here is a true story of a man and his wife who had a misunderstanding. Having a misunderstanding, living in the same house. So with the understanding, the man moved out from one bedroom and went into the other bedroom. Knowing that his wife had to go for surgery, the wife left, the life, wife went for surgery. She came back in the same house where the husband was. Could you imagine? He didn't have the courage. He didn't have... Um, the stomach, he didn't have what it takes to go over to his wife and say, I know that we had a misunderstanding, but she went for surgery. How things went. He stayed in one room and used his cell phone to call his wife in the other room to find out how is she doing. I'm not hitting social media. It has its good. We have to manage everything that is given to us. I was sitting in Command Park one day and a couple of young men walked in and you could see they're all friends. And here they walked in and they sat down on one of the seats that they had. And from the time they sat down, they forgot that each other was there and everyone in his own cell phone for the time that they were there and everybody was in their own thing, but they're friends. To this point, I sat down there for more than an hour, and they did not break a word with each other. Here is the sad part that we are looking at today. A study out of the University of Pittsburgh reveals that the more hours a person spends on the internet, the more depressed, the more stressed, and lonely he or she feels. So don't think because they are on it that they are connecting because they're not. 
making the connection. Now, the more disconnected a person is relationally, the, the more prone he or she is to engage in antisocial behaviors. Now, parents, adults, the closer youths are to their parents relationally, the less at risk they are for unacceptable behavior. When young people painfully sense um, of aloneness is not adequate or is not adequately dealt with, their anger and their fear may escalate into violence and tragedy. We're going to close, but let me close on this. Adults, parents, we cannot leave this service here today without making the connection. We have to make the connection. Sad, you know. Sad. I am doing weddings. There is a section on the, the form that asks for the father's name and asks for his surname. I've had the opportunity of counseling young people and I'm hearing many times is it a must that you put the name? Could you pl please put unknown? Sad society. Sad. Making the connection. Parents, there must be affirmation giving our youth and our young people a sense of assurance somehow. Affirm them. Affirm them. I found them. Just this morning, I was talking with somebody who gave a mother and her daughter a ride. And so when he saw them, they were by the side of the road, and both of them exchanging language. And they were not pleasing language, foul language. And the same mother telling the child about your mother and whatever and whatever. So he stopped to give them a ride. And there was the outburst in it. Why? And she said, I wanted to know who is the mother? And the man said to her, is it the way to indicate that this is the mother? And then she went on, and this is what broke the individual heart. She said to the individual, but I love my daughter. And so the man asked, yes, you love your daughter? When last have you told your daughter that you love her? And then she broke down. She became emotional. And she said, the truth is, it is always coming up, but he's just reaching by here and he just can't come out. How many of you know that? Secondly, there must be acceptance. Give your young people a sense of security. Give them some security. Thirdly, make the connection. Not only there must be affirmation and acceptance, but there must be appreciation. Giving youth a sense of significance, we have to give them a sense of significance. Not only affirmation, acceptance, and appreciation, but there must be affection. Give your children affection. Give your youth a sense of lovability. Talk to them. Let them know that you love them. They are special. That's the best thing that ever happened to you by giving birth to them. Give them that kind of thing. Let them know how much you love them. How about availability? They need your availability. Give your young people a sense of importance. Let them know that you are the most important person in the world. Treat them that way. In the cage. And then, accountability. Parents, adults, give your young people a sense of responsibility. 
Give them responsibility. Now, those of us that have grown, we're looking back. Thank God today. Thank God today. Thank God today. That those before us gave us a sense of responsibility. Now, I remember when I left Grenada and I went uh, to study, I went to Guyana. The first thing that was dropped in my lap at the time because of the problem that they had. Now, entering the first thing that was given to me, here I had a cow to look after. You talk about Bible college, a cow, because of the problem of no milk. So a dairy cow was bought for the school, but it was placed in my hand. But I remember growing up in Grenada with a father who would not allow you to lie down all day, but you had to get up in the morning to do a particular thing. Had a mother who used to say to me, make up your bed, wash your clothes, and do this. Now traveling away from home, it comes to being. I met another Grenadian who was there before me. Sad to say, all he could have done was to make porridge. So he made porridge in the morning, he made porridge night, um, around noon, he made porridge night time, and that's all he could have done. Give them a sense of responsibility. Very quickly, I also want to say to us, you need to connect with your youths and your young people in the world. Many of them, they live in a world of disappointments. They had great plans, but something shattered their plans. With their plans shattered, they are, dis um, they are disappointed. You need to come down and get there and to live in the world to understand this. As a pastor and as a leader myself, some people couldn't understand how I was rearing goats. And I had a number of them. Because he taught me a lot of lessons, all that you had to do in taking the responsibility. And not only that, but by just caring for those goats, help me to, to understand the behavioral pattern of people so now you can get into the world of disappointment. Could you imagine some young person had all the dreams in the world that this is going to happen and just something just blow it and that's it. We need to connect with them in the world of disappointment. Secondly, we need to connect in the world of relational loss. Hello. We have to connect with them in the relational loss. And that's why there is grief because the relational loss. Now, um, there has been a relationship, but now there is, uh, there is a loss. I sat there for a while. And I was asking because I know Raquel had other, other siblings. But the other brother, they live together like twin. And every time you see them in the community, they are together. I sat there and I watched him walk up the aisles to come here and stood there and watch his brother. And I only try to imagine. And I tell you, I could imagine that. And I could empathize with you today because I have lost two of my brothers. And I know the pains of losing a brother. Uh, and so just watching this and here is some kind of loss because Rickles is not there again for them you see them moving like twins and walking this who would understand and get into his world somebody could stand on the outside and say don't cry cheer up but do you know are you understanding where he is at The children that you gave birth to, do you take time, yes, to get down, to see where they are, to understand the pains, the trouble, the struggle, the bullying that they go through, just to be able to connect um, with them. We also need to connect with them, yes, in the world of conflict. It's not easy. This place is filled with conflict. Let me tell you something about conflict. With, when it comes to conflict, you cannot, brothers and sisters, avoid conflict. We could only manage the conflict. Everything that we do, and I've learned that even when you try, amen, to avoid conflict, 
you are creating more conflict in the effort of trying to avoid conflict. Hello? I'm not getting into the gang thing now, but watch this. In my house, there is always a conflict. Two reasons. Because I'm married to a female. Are you hearing me? So just to start life with a female is already a conflict. Because the male is headline and the female is detail. And as male, we find that they talk too much. And the women find that we don't give them enough information. And that's problem. I was going to a wedding one day and I decided, well, I know the wife will ask me question about the wedding and so on. And it was a lovely wedding because I myself enjoyed it. The young man was in the army in England, asked them for permission to use the uniform to get married. So he married in his military uh, outfit. And the thing was there. So see me now to avoid and to cut down the many questions, walk with my cell phone. So I took out photos of him hoping to satisfy the female at home. That's my wife. So I came with it and I start rolling and I said to her, darling, a lovely wedding. I say, watch the guy and watch him. Now I give her that to watch because that's the two main persons. She still turned to me and asked me, that person behind her in the picture, who that person? <laughs> Hello? Ladies, don't stop until they get detail. Brothers, ladies cannot understand us. How you take your, your phone, talk to your mother from 9 in the morning till 12. And she asks you when you finish, what did your mother say? And as men, what do you think we will say? Mommy said, hello? And the lady saying, from 9 to 12, that's all? Because all we remember as men is the headline. We go past. So there is conflict. So your children stepping out, stepping out. Brothers and sisters, there is conflict. So that's the first reason, a male and a female. The second reason is, my favorite color is blue. My wife's favorite color is red. All right? So conflict. We have bought a number of cars already. And oh, how I long to have a nice navy blue car parked in the yard. But the lady doesn't like blue. She likes red. So every vehicle we purchase is red. So I had to come to the place to say the color is not what gives you the riding and drives. So there must be some compromise somewhere. So if you like red, all right. Uh, no problem. So buy a red one and so on. So to avoid, are you hearing me? So to avoid brothers and sisters conflict is not possible because we would bump into people on a daily basis. But I'm saying to us, we have the authority to be able to manage the conflict. I close on this note. The wise man said, remember the creator in the days of your youth. Hello. I'm a typical example. I gave my life to the Lord. I'll tell you what I heard my mother say to me. I heard my mother say to me, you Dave, that's my first name, for those of you who don't know. She said, you Dave, I think I gave it a wrong name because all Daves I know wicked. I've heard my eldest sister with tears in her eyes look at me and say to me, boy, better it was you who had died in the place of my brothers instead of you because of the problem that you gave. And with everything else surrounding me, the conflict, the problem, the own weakness, and all of it. I hear my mother made a travel and in Venezuela sending things. And I just one day um, walking and mind you in that, that night in particular a couple of us 
came from smoking marijuana. I could you imagine a teenager? And that's why I work with them because I know where I came from. Here's a teenager just coming from smoking marijuana, borrow a family Bible from a neighbor, and a couple of us held that and we went up by the church that night just to create a scene. But while I was standing outside there, reality hit me that this is not all to life. There is a better way. So that night, I remember, after the preacher preaching, made an altar call, walked up, and tears in my eyes, and I purpose in my heart, from this day, I'm going to be a different person. And I never regretted, amen, remembering the creator in the days of my youth. Come on somebody. My better, better days of my life was spent serving the Lord, giving him praise and thanks regardless of. I urge you young man, give your life to the Lord. Today, don't wait until all your substance has gone. To say, I'm going to give my life. Just watch this. Just give me three minutes, I'm going to bring it in. You see, remember the creator. Having in brothers and sisters, it means to return in one's conscious mind. When I watch and I see the many things that happen, I have a reason to be thankful to the Lord. So if I shout a little bit, you just excuse me because, you see, God is a good God and we have to come to the place. So young man, I want to ask you, what is it that you're waiting on? Uh, what, is it, what is it that is preventing you from living a life that is pleasing in the sight of God? When the creator created us for his purpose and for his glory, and he said, remember the creator in the days of your youth. Remember who? The creator. Yes, the language implies that man has a creator. It would certainly be strange if he had not. Man has a creator. We didn't come here by accident. Don't follow the teaching of Charles Darwin that says that uh, uh, it just happened like this. Charles Darwin regretted he ever started the teaching on evolution. You know why? In his younger years, with everything that he had, Charles Darwin declared that there was no God. In his latter years, Charles Darwin came face to face with the God who created the universe. And Charles Darwin bowed his heart and asked the creator to forgive him. After Charles Darwin did that, by that time, his strength failed. Charles Darwin had, as it were, in his house, he had a little barn out in the yard. Charles Darwin called Christians and he said to them, you can use my barn in my yard and you can have a service. And when you sing songs and praise to the almighty God, I will open my windows so the praise and worship could enter. Charles Darwin, amen, regretted he ever started. There is a creator to serve. He created us. I know what I love about this verse. The Bible did not say, remember God. He said, remember your creator. Because anything can be God to any one of us. But there is one person who created the universe. You can turn to him and call him your God. I can say, my God. Because the word G-O-D simply means an object of worship. Remember how? By thinking of his person, by reflecting on his character, by acknowledging his goodness, by meditating in his word, by keeping his commandments. Remember when, in the days of your youth, 
Time is running by very quickly. So I close on this. I read the verse again. Remember when? Now. The creator in the days of your youth. While the evil days come not. Now the day the years draw nigh. Because suddenly you're going to say, I had no pleasure in them. With these years, brothers and sisters, if you remember God, if you take God, as you grow older, one of the things that will stand before you is the fact that you can reflect on the goodness of Almighty God. He has been good. God has kept me for these many years. Amen. Somebody. See God has kept me. We have sat and we have seen the evil days. As they come upon us. We are living in some trying times. We just came from COVID. Remember the creator in the days of your youth. When the evil days will come. And they are coming. We look around us. Watch the world. Look at Shir Amma, brothers Russia and Ukraine. Watch across the world. Look at Grenada. Look at the homicide. Look at the suicide cases. Look at St. Vincent. Look at St. Lucia. Look at St. Keats. Barbados. Evil days are upon us. And young people, the only hope that you have of a future is remembering the creator in the days of your youth. When I did that as a teenager, I was told I was too young. I was also told that I wasn't going to keep it up. I was told that it was a girl I saw in the church and I went after. I was told that you're going to come back right back out and meet us. Oh, I'm like the energizer battery. I just keep going and going and going and going and going. Because every time I think about the goodness of God, I just want to give him a shout. Every time I think about the goodness of God, I just want to give him a praise. When I think about it, brothers and sisters, you could have died, but look what God has done. Isn't that sufficient to give the Lord praise? With all that you've been through, you could have lost your mind. Isn't that sufficient that you're not in Mongi today? You are in the land of the living. You can still give the Lord praise and give him thanks. Isn't it wonderful in spite of how much your enemies came up against you? They stumble and they fall because God has protected you. Somebody, you just give the Lord a clap offering today. Somebody just give him praise. Somebody might want to say, he is my shield, he is my buckler, he is my hiding place. And it doesn't matter what I go through. The God I serve is well able. One songwriter said, in time like this, you need an anchor. In times like this, you need a savior. And be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock oh hallelujah young people that call is for you today to pause we can change Grenada I said we can change Grenada young people you have what it takes to change this place it hurt our hearts to watch a young man like this. We have to continue to trust the Lord that God will bring healing. I cannot say to your parents, I cannot say to your family members, let's forget that and move on. Death has stages. We trust God that God would. It is unfortunate and far from what you are hearing via the radio, it is unfortunate that he reached to this stage before we actually 
bring the two communities together and call peace. It's unfortunate. But we still would want to say better late than never because we don't want more casualty as we go forward. I beg you, ask God, ask God, ask God to help you. Today I speak to you parents, we have a part to play. Again, love your children. Hello? Forget those who want to just come and see you, hug your daughter and tell you, as though you're still living in COVID days, oh, you can't get too close to your daughter. Still love your daughter again. Um, embrace them. I mean, let me ask you this as I close. Parents, when last did you bless your children? When last did you lay your hands, Father, on your child and say, I'm blessing you. I know you're going out. I am blessing you. I'm praying God's protection. So important. We were gathering. Our churches gathered at Point Salim a Sunday. We had such a lovely service that became so bitter at the end of the service and nothing to do with the service. Leaving the service, we heard that there was a death in River Sally. And then we learned it was Knoxford who had family members there. And so that just turned everything just, just sour. And so we had to come up. And with everything else, and with my involvement with these young men, Watch this. Watch this. When we got up, because from the function we said, we're going straight by the family to bring some consolation to them. On our way up, my daughter looked at me and she said, Daddy, as the pastor in the, fa in the, in the community, I want to extend my sympathy to you. And she said, I know it will be a lot for you. And you know what she did? She took her hand, rested it on her papa's forehead, and said, I bless you for the journey. You know how that felt? And could you imagine, as a mother, as a father, taking your hands, laying it on your youth, making the connection, and saying, you're going out. I am blessing you in the name of the Lord. I think we are ready, Grenada. We can change it around. We can turn things around. Young people, we're going to turn it around. Yes, we're going to turn it around. We're going to trust God. We're going to remember God. And we're going to walk in the way of the Lord. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for listening. But in the midst of all of that, but in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all of that, with all that was said and remembering, because you got to take the lead, I wonder if there is a young person or are there young persons in this gathering here today, or parents who would say, Pastor King, I'm ready. To be a part of this in changing our society. I've seen enough. I have heard enough. And I know of a lot that can happen. Today, I want to remember my creator in the days of my youth. If you're such a person, would you indicate to me by saying to me, Pastor King, pray for me. By just lifting your hands. Where I'm standing, I will see your hand. If you lift your hands, are there persons like this who would say, I am making that today. I'm seeing the hands of parents. Yes. Are there young people who would say, yes, we are willing to make change. I'm seeing hands up and about. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we pause and we just want to thank you for your goodness, your mercies. We want to thank you for your love. 
Today, Father, we are aware of what confronts us. We want to make a difference. Lord, our hearts are hurting. We have sinned so much. And we believe, Father, in heaven, even today, as we, Lord God Almighty, conduct the funeral service of a young man who, Lord God, had the potential to make his contribution to our society. Today, Father, his remains remain here. But today, we breathe life. Oh God, I pray that you would touch somebody and so as people surrender their lives and as they commit themselves to you, Father, you'd build hedges over their lives. And so, Father, we will champion the cause of peace, no violence, oh God Almighty, in our nation. Please have your way. We give you the honor and we give you all the praise. Amen. And amen. Somebody just give the Lord a hand clap of praise today because he is God. Now we are getting ready to leave here. To go to the cemetery just um, two things that should happen here before we leave. Um, the family members without you it is very difficult for them to make it join this difficult period um, some of you they know others they don't know some of you called but in this gathering they want to take the time to say thank you to the family um, Cardinal Conwell will come today to do that on their behalf but while she is coming if you used a key like this to drive yourself here and you're not too sure how you're getting back home when you're such. Please, the missing key for a vehicle is right here so you can just see me after the service and um, you can have it. Good afternoon to everyone. Saying thanks is necessary when you have been surrounded by so much love and support. We, the family members and loved ones of Rickelson to Saint, wish to warmly thank you for your comforting words and genuine ask, acts of love and kindness in this time. Also, for your prayers during our time of loss. From the calls, to the messages, to the hugs and different contributions, like the artwork on the tomb, the t-shirts, to just school for the live stream, which allowed our family members abroad and those who couldn't be here to view the service. Also, to those who would have contributed their time and preparation to this day, thank you. To our bishop for the message, to Father Paul and the members of the River Sally Catholic Church for opening your doors to us, thank you. And to those who may not have been mentioned here today, but have contributed in some way or another, thank you so much. Last but not least, to each and every one of you present here, we are truly grateful for your presence. Words alone can't express how much this means to us. May God bless each and every one of you for supporting us in our time of need. Thank you once more. All right, folks, we come to this part. Um, just before we close the coffin to get out here, we do this final hymn. So we invite you to join with us in doing this final hymn. While we invite the family members, relatives and friends to come and have your final viewing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion, bright and blessed, He'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. i
señor.
He's recording in Psalms 23. I, I, the Psalms that I almost all of us here are aware of. But to be in this gathering, we are going to do this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and 1 to 8 read, To every to sin there is a there season, is a season and, a and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to be healed, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to moon, time to dance, time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, time to refrain from embracing, time to get, time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak. Time to, time to love, love. Time, time to hate, time, time, time of war, time, time of peace. Yeah. Psalms 27, 1 said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall, whom shall I fear? I fear? The Lord is the strength, strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It is recorded in Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is. He is near. Today, ladies and gentlemen, family members, it is very unfortunate that we stand here today and have to commit the remains of a young man into this tomb. Today, as we do the committal, today I stand here and I'm now committing yes, his body to this And as is customary, hot to hot, dust to dust, looking for the general resurrection on the Lord's Day. Yeah? Put it in. the artificial
did it like her, and I told him and God Mother, where do you know? Where do you come from? Come, 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 come,
Okay, ready for the car now? Okay. Okay. I'm going to